yeah, thank you very much for the introduction and <laughs> yeah, for giving me the opportunity to speak here. My talk is about visualizations um, with JSX curve in the LMS Mumia. Mumia. So this is the uh, platform which we developed at Integral Learning. And yeah, myself, Andreas Maurichat, um, yeah, I'm employed at Integral Learning and also at um, the FH Aachen. So I'm on kind of both sides, also at teaching. And yeah, you will see that later. Um, so yeah, maybe first I um, <clears throat> give some details on the platform Mumia. So what, what is that? I mean, it's an e-learning platform designed for support in teaching mathematics. And yeah, the largest courses on, on the platform are the OMB Plus, the online mathematics bridging course, um, and the Heim for Mint, um, which is an advanced mathematics course, which are developed by German universities. And yeah, the OMB Plus is even um, available in English, French, and Chinese. Yeah. And yeah, the platform also hosts uh, a pool of refereed online exercises, uh, which is searchable by text, topic, and so on. And yeah, just to give you an impression, I want to show you these screenshots. So on the upper left, you see uh, the landing page of the OMB Plus with several chapters and so on. Uh, on the right, an example of a content um, page. Yeah, and on the lower left, this is uh, an uh, example of an exercise um, yeah, where the student has to input st stuff and, and can save, and then it's uh, automatically corrected, these um, yeah, exercises. And on the <coughs> uh, lower right, uh, this is a screenshot of, of the pool browser. Yeah, where you can on the left hand side you have the um, selection bar. Uh, yeah, you can select by <coughs> several uh, things, and on the right you see the the hits that you get uh, for that. And yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, we want to keep it simple for teachers to use and to develop uh, the content. Um, and so, I mean, on one hand, we also have an integration in Moodle, Elias, and so on by, uh, via plugin. And on the other hand, we have a web-based authoring tool, which is called Mapmio. And yeah, the content, yeah, or the source will be written in LaTeX style. Yeah, because we thought, I mean, it's addressed to, yeah, teachers for mathematics and so on. Usually they know about LaTeX and how to write LaTeX. And so that's the yeah in our opinion the easiest thing for them to write um yeah we'll see that later when i show some examples um and but before that i show you some uh, how it looks like in the integration in elias in that case so that the elias of, of the fr Aachen, and there you can just uh yeah have a new object um and in here you see the mumia task yeah, and then you get this moving task is, <clears throat> yeah, you can select it from the pool browser and um, yeah, import it into your Elias. Yeah, I mean, of course, one has, has to um, yeah, install the plugin first, but <laughs> that we already have done in BFA. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, for learning with the Mumia, I mean, the, what is the, are the main features? Um, of Mumia content, I mean, one is that we have a really large toolbox uh, for online exercises uh, with powerful corrector. Um, and yeah, we are also have interactive visualizations which are synchronized with text. And formerly they were, yeah, written applet based. And, it, and the new thing is now that we use JSX curve for those. And yeah, by combining this powerful corrector tool and, and, and the interactive visualizations, uh, we also, um, yeah, now have graphical exercises, you know, where, where the um, student has, has to interact with the um, graphics to solve the problems. Yeah, and also, which might be interesting for um, 
uh, computer science is that uh, we have also exercises for coding with Python, Java, or Octave. Okay. And yeah, and the main things what I or what I want to talk to you now um, is really uh, the interactive visualizations, um, with synchronized with text, and also the graphical exercise. Yeah, and yeah, <clears throat> so I show you some examples. Um, yeah, I have to say sorry. My examples are in German. I hope you see now the the new screen. Oops. Yeah. So the first example. Um, yeah. Here you see on the right. Um, yeah. You, you see the example with a uh, visualization. Yeah. Where we have this sine and tang uh, tangents and cosine. And yeah, it's. Yeah, we should show that for small values of x, the sine is approximately x and also tangs approximately x. And so if you, yeah, you can move that point and then the values down here, they uh, adjust to that thing. Yeah, so you see for, yeah, for x 0.25, you have sine is 0.25 and tangs, and tangs of x is 0.26, yeah, almost the same. And yeah, how is how is that done in in Mumia? So how do you write such a thing? As I already said, it's it's um, Latish based the code. So the source code for that thing is on the left. And so what you do is just you have a an environment called gener generic JSX visualization, and in that environment you define the different stuff. So the first here at the title, yeah, which you see above the um, visualization or above the canvas. Then every object that you want to define is a variable. So inside this variable um, environment, um, you define several objects like point, yeah, P0, uh, which has corner is zero, zero. Yeah. And yeah, the parametric function here, this is the, the quarter circle yeah the point on curve it's, it's just the glider and and so on and here we have the segments for the cosinus for the sine and uh, for the cosine sine and tangents which are displayed here cosine sine and tangents and 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 you have this arc in red yeah so these are just all defined as variables and then you have an environment canvas where you define what what is in the canvas. I mean, you define the size, which is here 400 pixel, I think. Uh, then you define the left boundary, the right boundary, uh, the bottom, you know, and the rest is calculated um, automatically. And also what you do is you, um, here, you tell which uh, objects should be plotted. Yeah, so this, yeah, this uh, quarter circle, should be plotted it's here the ray is that that one and all this stuff yeah, and and the text which should be shown is just uh, given in a uh, text with a text command and inside the text command you can use usual latex and you refer to the variables that you defined above um, just with the command backslash var yeah like you might be used with LaTeX, you just, you know, and then this just gives the value of the, you know, um, of the variable. Yeah, for example, in the case here of, of that, um, yeah, that Bogenlänge is just the number, which is, yeah, <clears throat> which is value of X. Okay. Yeah, and furthermore, I mean, you see, I have different colors and I have the labels, and you can define these also with commands. Label, you give the name of the variable, and then the label that should be shown. And the same style, you give the color. Um, 
uh, the command color for the variable and which uh, color it should get. Yeah, and so uh, this is all that you, you have to do. And then you get these nice applications. And yeah, the synchronization is done in the background. And uh, yeah, to show you, I mean, this is a really a simple example because I wanted to show you the code for that also. Um, I mean, if you do more complex stuff, I mean, it gets more complicated, but the thing is about the same. And I mean, what you can do with this easy syntax is something what looks really complicated like that thing. Um, yeah, this is uh, for, yeah, for the curvature of, of function graph. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, and the, it's about, yeah, the curvature of function graph and the connection with this uh, derivative. Yeah, so in the, in the first um, canvas, we have the function graph and, and here the point, you can move that point on the x-axis, yeah. Usually it, it, it's, yeah, it's running smooth like Chase Xcraft is doing, but um, I think it was the, uh, yeah, it's it's not <laughs> running smooth for you because uh, because of the uh, zoom thing. And <laughs> yeah, that's a <laughs> why, why is the equation not uh, looking nice? Um, that, that's because um, we haven't. Um, it's still a little bit work in progress, so um, we will make the uh, text nicer using. Uh, math warning, math checks, yeah. Um, but that's the that's point uh, which I haven't done yet. <laughs> um, that's why it, also here it will look much nicer when we uh, when we're finished with the thing. Um, yeah, I hope I would have already done it uh, for that presentation, but we weren't quick enough for that. OK. Um, yeah, and so here we have the function graph and here we have the derivative of that. And I can move the point on <clears throat> up here and on the x-axis and then the point here moves. And also you see that down there in the second canvas, um, it's also, uh, yeah, it's synchronized with that one. And I can also move that point, yeah, because that's just defined to be the same variable in the in the here and here just displayed on both canvases. Yeah, and to get the second canvas, it's just that you, in the code, you just have to define a second canvas environment. And yeah, and what you also see is if I move that, that also the text uh, adjusts, yeah, that we had already. I mean, here it makes a, a yeah right curve. And if I move more to the right, then you see it switches to left curve and so on. And yeah, and the interaction also goes in the other direction that you can um, change um, yeah, things in, in, in the text. For example, here I can change the coefficient to minus two and then um, the whole curve uh, just, okay, maybe that was not so nice to, do, to use here the minus two because you don't see the whole thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the, the action goes in both directions. Yeah, and for, for uh, writing the thing, uh, you don't have to do much more than, than I showed you in the easy example. Um, but yeah, I mean, these, you have just to define these coefficients as editable variables. And yeah, and then they are editable in the text. And yeah, and as I said, a second canvas environment. Yeah, I think I sh didn't show you that in the before in that thing, but here you see, um, yeah, these variables they have yeah can, can have the attribute editable. Then you can change them in the text or in in the in the canvas or non-editable, and then you can't change them. Yeah, that's because why I can't change them here. 
Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, on one hand, um, that's what I sh uh, showed you just now is that we have this yeah, integrated uh, in our Mumia, this JSX visualizations, and you can yeah, have several canvases. You can, yeah, adapt the text, synchronize the text with the canvas and the other way around. And yeah, we can also use that for our uh, exercises. And that's the next thing um, I want to show you. Um, yeah, that's some stuff above that is not interesting for us now, but um, yeah, I want to show you an exercise. I mean, um, yeah, also kind of simple exercise. What is given is that you have a function term um, two times x e to the x minus one. And you should adjust the curve so that it fits to the function. And yeah, and what you can uh, move here is the asymptotics uh, asymptot and, and the y-intercept of the curve. And then for the power here, you can uh, yeah, use the slider to get the right power. Yeah. And when you have done the adjustment, you click on save and yeah your answers are saved and then yeah you even see the explanation so the asymptote is, is wrong and the point p is also wrong yeah and then you can adjust that and yeah it's getting better yeah so how is that done in in the code so the part uh, on the top um, is the same as we had just now or similar to what we had just now. We have a visualization with the variables, with the, yeah, with the canvas. Yeah, I also inserted here the snap to crit. So yeah, that we don't have really long float, uh, floating numbers. And yeah, what is new is now that we have these answer commands where yeah i pass several values to the problem yeah, to the corrector and yeah, because it has to be corrected and, and that's that's then yeah the, the other part down here uh, so the exercises are called problems in in mumia and yeah so values from here are just passed down there and in the problem there um, happens all the correction stuff and, and so on. Yeah. So the visualization is just made to pass things down. And yeah, and so what is written here is that so the value of a zero, uh, I don't know exactly what was a zero. Uh, a zero was the value of, of the slider. Um, then B zero is a y. Uh, this is um, the yeah um, the y cornered <clears throat> of the line, and yeah, and the y intercept is the y intercept of the point. Okay. Um, yeah, these are passed down as the a zero is the first answer of the first question, second answer of the first question, third answer of the first question. Uh, and down here is really yeah the randomized numbers a b and c which make up the parameters for the function f which is yeah which is written here and as in the visualization yeah in the text it's given as var f and yeah and i mean here you see how it should also look like in the visualizations uh, soon um yeah, nicely written. It's a nice formula, two times e to the x minus one. OK. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then so for the corrector, we have these answer blocks where we give the type. And the type is here graphics number, which just means that 
um, it, the problem expects a number from the prefix. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah, the solution which is, has to compare to is the A. Yeah, so that's the coefficient here and so on. And then we have some explanation commands, which are yeah, what is showed here as explanations, if something is wrong. Yeah, yeah so we have two parts. One is really the problem. This is the thing which exists quite long in, in, in Numia, which is really has developed through, through the years. And now we connected it to the visualizations that that are newly done with JSX Yeah. And finally, I <clears throat> want to show you what yeah what, what we can really do with that stuff, um, more complex um, uh, exercise, um, namely about uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Um, so so given is the matrix uh, and we want to have um, and the task is to, to to get the eigenvectors for the matrix and here in the in the canvas what is displayed in yeah dark blue is one vector uh, and in light blue is the image of this vector um, after multiplication multiplication with a and the same with dark red and light red and so the task for the student is to adjust these vectors so, yeah, so to be to be eigenvectors. And so one is here, for example, and the other is then, oh, for example, here. Looks good. And yeah, and uh, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I saved that once before, and then I got this explanation that the red one was not an eigenvector. And yeah, and then the thing will be corrected. Of course, there is yeah. The problem was that I didn't use it for some time, and then I was locked out. And yeah, okay. Um, so the explanation is wrong, or I was, yeah, yeah, it has to be a bit improved a bit. Um, but yeah, so I just made it too. Okay, um, we'll see. I don't know why it doesn't work now, but it tells, still tells me that it's not an eigenvector. Um, yeah, but what what it? Um, yeah, but at least it recognizes that the blue one is one. So um, yeah, what you see here is is that yeah, it it can even correct uh, things. Um, which are not unique. Yeah, I mean, in the, in the example before, we had unique solutions, but here, I mean, there are a lot of solutions. Yeah, I mean, the blue vector it can be longer or shorter. Um, also, the red one, and um, uh, you can switch the two, um, and so on. And also, um, what it shows is that um, for displaying the stuff. Um, the visualization also gets information from the problem. And because the problem here is giving, uh, is creating the matrix, and then the visualization uh, takes the um, values or takes the entries of the matrix from the, from the problem uh, to display the images of the vectors. Yeah. And also if I, um, and the whole thing is also randomized. So if I can give a new one, um, takes a little bit. Or, yeah. 
interesting thing. Um, this always happens when I when I show something. Okay. Um, so it, it usually it works, but uh, of course it doesn't work when I give a presentation. Um, so let let's stop with that um, thing. Um, yeah, these were the examples on the graphical questions uh, that I showed you, and yeah. So it's that leads to thank you for your attention. And yeah, if there are any questions, just ask and um, yeah, you can write to me directly or, or also on our contact email. Thank you very much. <laughs>